All right, so today we are doing weak acids, and we're gonna go through painstakingly detail on how to do weak acid calculations. But if you understand equilibrium, you'll understand weak acids, so it shouldn't be too bad. Let's review. What's the general reaction for an acid dissociation? We call our generic acid just HA, right? Because we're just laughing all the time about how much fun we have in this class. So HA reacts with water, which is a liquid. That is in equilibrium with H3O plus and whatever the anion is, right? And so what makes an acid weak? We talked about this earlier in the week. What is the difference between a weak acid and a strong acid? What is it result of? One can lift 20 pounds and the other can lift 20,000 pounds. What's the difference between a weak acid and a strong acid? I'll give you a hint, it involves K. Um, one of them is more product, the other is more reactive. Right, for a weak acid, Ka is significantly less than one. It's usually much, much, much less than one, right? So Ka is less than one, that means it's reactive favored. Think back to Monday when we did strong acid calculations, right? When we said, okay, if you've got a 0.5 molar of solution of HCl, that means you've got a 0.5 molar of H3O plus, right? Because it's 100% dissociated. For a strong acid, Ka is significantly greater than one, so you've got 100% products, 0% reactants. But I said, when we get to weak acids, that's gonna totally go away, because weak acids are reactant favored, right? So that means that at equilibrium, you've got mostly this and a small amount of this. Do we remember the difference between a weak acid and a strong acid? Because it's really important that you know the difference here because the calculations are the direct result of which kind of acid you have. Right, if it's a strong acid, you just take the natural log of whatever the initial concentration is because if it's initially 0.3 molar, guess what? It's gonna be 0.3 molar here, punch in your calculator, you're done. That's for strong acids only though. Weak acids, you have to make ice tables. Okay, so we're gonna be using ice tables today. Do we understand why we're doing ice tables versus not doing ice tables? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so there are two kinds of calculations we're gonna be doing today. The first one is we're gonna calculate pH from Ka, and that one we can use the 5% approximation on. On the other kind of calculation, we're gonna calculate Ka from the pH, but we are not gonna use the 5% approximation there because we won't need it. So let's do the first kind, calculate pH from Ka. So on the handout that I gave you, it's a table of Ka values. So if you need a Ka value on your homework or on a test, and I didn't give you the Ka value in the problem, you can look it up in that handout. Okay, that's just the value of Ka's. I'm not gonna make you memorize Ka's. That's just ridiculous use of your brain. So if you ever need a Ka value and it's not provided in the problem, look at the handout. There are a zillion tables online of Ka values too. So if you ever need one that isn't on that handout, you can always look it up online. Okay, this is acetic acid. So what's the formula for acetic acid? It comes from acetate, so that's H, C2, H3, O2, right? So we always begin by writing our dissociation equation because you can't do an ice table without a reaction. Do we agree on the dissociation equation? Acetic acid produces hydronium ion and acetate. So we're gonna do ice table here. I see. It's 0.3 molar, so 0 0.30. This is a liquid, so do we include it at all? No. All right, there's none of this initially, zero, none of acetate initially as well. Ka is less than one, so can we use the 5% approximation? Yes, we're going to, right, using the 5% approximation. So this goes down by x, but we're gonna assume that x is so small that it doesn't significantly change the equilibrium value. This is gonna go up by x, so it's x at equilibrium. This is gonna go up by x, so it's x at equilibrium. 
So this is really no different than what we did yesterday on the exam, right? Can we solve for x? Is this something we're capable of doing? I hope so. <laughs> I haven't graded your test yet. We'll find out, right? So Ka is equal to the concentration of hydronium times concentration of acetate over the concentration of acetic acid, C2H3. So when I plug in my values, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, fifth is equal to x squared over 0 0.30. Do we agree? So when we do our arithmetic, I get x equals, what did I get? I got 0 0.0023. Okay, now x gets plugged back in here, gets plugged back in here, so that's 0 0.0023, 0 0.0023. Now, how do I get pH? Do I have everything I need in order to get pH? What's the definition of pH? pH is negative log concentration of H3O plus. Do I have the concentration of H3O plus now? Yes, that's the value of X. So that's just negative log of 0 0.0023. So I got 2.63. Two sig figs gives me two decimal places in pH. Is that a reasonable pH for an acid? Yes. If you came out with nine, is that a reasonable pH for an acid? So this is literally exactly the same as what we did up through yesterday's test. The only new part is now you just take the log of it. So all of this, I could have put this question on the test yesterday and just asked you to solve for all the equilibrium concentrations and theory you would have been able to do that right the only new part here is you just take it one step further and take the log you good all right so there are two problems for you to try is everyone okay if i erase does anyone need this all right if you look at the bottom of your note taking guide there there are two problems for you to try screen moved up so you try these two. Dictionary. What's the pH of a 0.5, uh, excuse me, of a five molar nitrous acid solution? And there's Ka. What's the pH of a 0.1 molar hypochlorous acid solution? There's its Ka. I'll pause the recording and give you a chance to try these. Okay. 